Okay, so I will be doing quality service. I'll be teaching you guys about that if you don't already know what it is. So, what is quality of service? Basically, it, it is what it sort of sounds like, you know, it's how good can you build the network or optimize it for what you're using it for. And this is essentially your textbook definition. The analysis of certain web-based applications and scenarios and tailoring of web resources to achieve good network performance. So how do we do that? What is the solution to do that? The first one, the easiest one, is called over-provisioning. And basically it's just build the strongest network you possibly can that can just take anything, right? There's no sort of optimization, it's just build it as best as you can and hopefully you'll just be able to take whatever you throw at it, right? But it, it, that obviously comes with its own problems, as you can imagine. What do you think a problem with doing that could be? Anybody? Expensive, yeah. Building a network that strong is very expensive and um, it's not very practical. And now this is just going, running through different scenarios and just bandwidth and what uses more, what uses less. I'm sure you guys can imagine what uses more and less. And you, know, you guys use the web and the internet, I'd imagine. So uh, it's just email, low, something like uh, streaming would be high when you're on demand. You have your four types of bit rate, um, your constant, which is telephone. That's just an example, but essentially it's constant, right? There's not really gonna be that much fluctuation. A phone call is a phone call as far as data goes. Then you have your uh, real-time bit rate, so video conferencing, and your non-real-time bit rate, which is on-demand video, something where it's like sort of buffered and stuff. And then of course file transfer is available bit rate. Jitter. So unlike telephones and stuff, network network traffic and data is very inconsistent, right? You could stream a video at one point, you know, a lot of high data, or you could just open an email. So jitter is when there's a delay in packet arrival times. So of course remote login is, is sensitive to this, you know, if you're using it and you can sort of tell if there's a lag or a jitter, it's very noticeable as opposed to something like an email, you know, it's not a big deal. I sort of answered that last question. Can you think of another service that would not be affected by jitter? No? Web page maybe? Things to consider when setting up a network. What applications need from the network, basically what you're gonna use it for, how to regulate traffic, how to reserve resources, and whether the network can safely accept more traffic. It's almost like building a bridge. You gotta build it so it can take more cars than you say it can, you know, sort of like that. Traffic shaping. So again, Data is very bursty, you know, it's very inconsistent. So um, you have to sort of gauge what you're gonna be using it for so you can sort of tailor your network to that. So basically, you can sort of shape based on applications you use and things, you know, say, let's say you know you're gonna be streaming a lot of video. That's something you can shape towards. SLA, service level agreement. So basically you, when you get a network, you sort of agree to these terms saying, oh, I'm gonna use it a certain way, I'm gonna do this. It's sort of like when you, uh, like Time Warner Cable, they say so many megs up, down, you know, you're not gonna be able to do certain things if it's not strong enough, if you don't pay for enough. So that's basically what this is. It's also similar to like phone data. So you get like a 10 gig network plan you know, you can't go over that. It's, it's things like this. And now there are two main algorithms that we use for the quality of service. And the first one is the leaky bucket. It's a little older than the second one we'll talk about, but it was proposed in 1986. And as the name implies, it essentially is just 
the leaky bucket and the water represents the flow of uh, the traffic and the data. So um, it essentially is a constant stream. So it's it's again it's old, but it's still uh, it's still used in some cases. But it allows to have a um, a reservoir of data, and then it's just a constant flow. It's just like the name would imply. And then the second one I'll talk about is the token bucket. And um, it's sort of similar to the leaky bucket, but tokens can be taken out of the, as opposed to the leaky bucket, where it's just a constant flow, that's it. Token bucket, you can take a token back out if you don't need it anymore or whatever. And it, uh, it varies a little bit, whereas leaky bucket is just a constant stream. And uh, token bucket is, um, can vary. A little bit as opposed to the leaky button. Okay, cool.